Hello everybody, my name is Grabunny, and today we're going to be taking a look at some promotional renders for Nintendo 64 era Mario games. I wanted to focus on the N64 era in this video because the console existed at a weird technological inflection point. Humanity finally had the computational power to produce detailed 3D renditions of the Mushroom Kingdom and its colorful denizens, but said computational power was only available on specialized workstations rather than consoles themselves. As a result, Nintendo was able to produce promotional renders like this to represent blurrier and blockier scenes like this. The N64 is ever so slightly older than I am, so I can't exactly speak to how these renders came across back in the good old days. Even as a 2000s kid who started with the GameCube, though, I found them both visually impressive and somewhat uncanny. With their significantly higher poly counts and realistic lighting, these renders provide a glimpse into the worlds envisioned by the developers. They might have created something like this if they hadn't been limited by the technology of their time. The projects focused on recreating and animating the models used in these renders, namely Render 96, are appealing because they allow people to actually play the idealized versions of games from this era. These renders aren't perfect, of course. The characters often look like they're made of plastic, and their proportions can be a bit wonky at times. Still, I can't really complain. The technology was fairly new at the time, and imperfections are guaranteed to come with innovation. There are tons of renders on my list, so I should probably get started on the actual reviews. Let's all just take a few minutes to sit back, relax, and think about the N64 games that only really existed in the pages of instruction booklets and magazines. Super Mario 64, which comprised a whopping 50% of the N64's North American launch lineup, is the obvious place to start. Nintendo produced an absolute crapload of renders to depict Mario's basic moveset. Several hallmarks of the franchise's N64-era art style made themselves evident as early as day one. Curved surfaces have super shiny highlights, shadows are thick and dark, and complex textures are few and far between. Everything from Mario's hat to his overalls to even his skin relies on a solid color and some shading. You could use this as a point of criticism, but I've always liked how the smooth appearance of these renders made Mario resemble some sort of wooden sculpture. Pretty much every part of Mario's moveset received a pre-rendered equivalent, including rare and extremely situational moves like the slide kick. All of these renders appeared in the enclosed instruction book so I guess Nintendo just wanted a clear illustration of every move for the sake of completion. This render is one of the worst ones. Mario's lower lip looks weirdly prominent and thick, although the shadow cast by his nose might have something to do with that. I always thought the render for the sidestep move was really interesting. The gloomier color scheme makes Mario look like he's trying to escape from jail. An alternate version of this render further sells the comparison with a spotlight effect. It's oddly misrepresentative of the game, since Mario never has to do anything remotely like this. Hey, could someone make a jailbreak ROM hack for Mario 64? We need to finally make this render a reality. Nintendo got a lot of mileage out of these renders even after Super Mario 64 launched in 1996. They periodically appeared in promotional material until a few years into the GameCube era. Now, this one is a good example. It appeared in at least a few issues of Nintendo Power as part of an advertisement for Nintendo's website. You know, back when the internet was some newfangled invention and people didn't automatically assume they could go online to learn more about a game. This screenshot came from an issue released in 2000. This render is the face of the game. It appeared on the box art as well as this nice piece of key art, which I love for its bright color palette and cameos from minor characters. Honestly, this one takes me right back to 2007. I didn't become majorly interested in Mario 64 until I watched some early YouTube videos about it. One of the first things I did as a lifelong Super Mario 64 addict was download this image onto my parents' Windows XP computer and use it as my account's wallpaper. So yeah, it's heavily nostalgic for me. The only render potentially more iconic than the one from the box art is this one, which depicts Metal Mario in an area similar to Hazy Maze Cave. It's famous for the slick, reflective texture on Metal Mario and the atmospheric lighting. I would kill for a full-resolution poster of this. There's an equivalent render for the Vanish Cap, which I've never seen anybody talk about. In all fairness, it isn't that impressive. The grainy wall texture looks like it belongs in the Windows 3D maze, and Mario looks a little sinister. Look at those eyebrows. 
Moving from Mario 64's protagonist to its antagonist, Bowser looks like an absolute menace. His colors are vibrant, and the leathery textures on his skin make him seem super tough. I would not want to mess with him. This? Adorable. This? Terrifying. They nailed Bowser's design here, which makes me wonder how they got him so wrong in the game itself. Polycount limits can't be the only reason, right? Bowser often appears alongside Mario in official art. Their dynamic is clear in these images. The one on the left sells their rivalry, complete with a nice little smirk from Bowser. The one on the right, meanwhile, is just silly. Bowser looks like a cat being held by the scruff of his neck. He looks so useless with his limbs just sticking out like that, and he's clearly embarrassed about how Mario managed to snatch his tail. Even though his model is primitive, it has a ton of personality. It would be remiss of me to ignore this artwork of Bowser frying the plumber's posterior. The lighting is great, and the arena has a foreboding vibe, especially with that blood-red sky. There are multiple shots of the scene from different angles. I guess Nintendo was justifiably proud of it. The render used on the front of the cartridge has always intrigued me, since it just consists of Bowser chasing Mario through some untextured hills. Where are they? Bowser never appears in a sunny area like this. The ground just kind of disappears on the render's left side, almost as if Mario and Bowser are running across a Roblox base plate. I'm usually a fan of weird, nondescript areas in video games, but this choice seems like an odd one when any of the other renders we just saw would have worked fine. Case in point, both Japanese versions of Mario 64 used different artwork to much greater effect. The beta version of this artwork is even stranger, with hills covered in stone instead of grass. Mario and Bowser don't contrast as well with the bluish-gray, so I prefer the final version. I just wish they could have given the grass a bit of texture to make it look less plasticky. I was only able to find this one render of Peach at a terrible resolution. There's very little to work with here, so we'll pass judgment on her after we get into some other games. Toad has four renders, which more or less solidified his design until the end of time. I'm curious about this one. It looks like he's doing a ground pound, which is weird since he does nothing but hop in place in the actual game. I wonder if Nintendo had plans for him to do something else. Also, I want to draw special attention to this render. Seem familiar? That's right! It's Toad's render from his rumored appearance in Melee. Call me crazy, guys, but I think this image might have been faked. What? I had to slip some sort of Melee reference into this video. It's obligatory at this point. Finally, Lakitu has a render as well. He looks... fine. I don't know. It just didn't feel right to leave him out. The guy works hard, even if his camera work is shoddy at times. The next Mario game to launch on the N64 was Mario Kart 64. First up are some renders of the game's eight playable characters. They have the same plasticky appearance as the ones from Mario 64, and overall are a bit of a mixed bag. Mario's render looks great, as we could have safely assumed. The determination on his face in this picture kind of reminds me of his Melee model. Donkey Kong's model is of similar quality, although I think that's because Nintendo reused the one Rare already perfected during the development of Donkey Kong Country. Bowser apparently had the contrast of his textures softened a little, but his ferocity is intact. Yoshi and Toad look good, and Wario looks fine if a bit compressed. I'm not a big fan of Luigi's model. He looks kind of soulless, almost as if he's a doll. And as for Peach, her render is actually my least favorite of the bunch. She looks like she just walked out of a Rankin-Bass Christmas special. Her face is flat and her body is too stubby, probably because Nintendo needed to squeeze her into the cart. She got better renders later on, at least. Here we have some combat scenes to represent the battle mode. The victims' faces are appropriately horrified at the sheer violence involved. Yoshi's is my favorite. Look at those eyes! Those are the eyes of a man who's about to lose everything. Finally, we have multiple scenes of the characters racing on the tracks themselves. They aren't of the best quality, but it's great to see some of these environments in a bit more detail. As long as we don't count the remade versions from future Mario Kart games, anyway. This render of Toad's Turnpike is probably my favorite, if only because starry skies make my heart melt. I'm curious as to what inspired the creation of this render, since the train doesn't appear in a grassy area in the actual game. Oh, and this one is good too. 
Bowser looks so cute with his big head and stubby limbs. I'm also a fan of this render of Mario opening a bottle of champagne. Luigi is a bit more lively here, although that comes at the expense of Wario appearing absolutely massive. His fists are nearly the size of Mario's head. Is he normally supposed to look this big? I suppose he was pretty massive in Super Mario Land 2, although I can't tell if his size in this render is an intentional reference or a mistake. And with that, we've pretty much exhausted everything from Mario Kart 64. There isn't a whole lot else to discuss unless we want to talk about 18 other renders of Mario in his cart from different angles. We're not doing that. Next up is Mario Party. The individual character renders are generally strong. Wario and Yoshi are standouts, since they have super clean models with vibrant colors. We also have a close-up view of Peach, who is finally starting to look like her usual self. Also, here's a picture of Toad with legs. Kinda cursed, huh? We also have a render of the Koopa Troopa, who officiates the games. This variation with his eyes angled toward the floor makes him look a little shifty. This art is lovely. It's so colorful, and there are tons of tiny details. I like how Luigi is dutifully marching onto a happening space. A condensed variation of this render functioned as the game's box art. This version always confuses me at first glance, since the 3 on the dice block makes me think I'm looking at Mario Party 3 until I actually think about what I'm looking at for a few seconds. Next up are the six title screen renders that appear based on whichever character won the last game. While they depict some fun scenarios, Wario suffering will never stop being funny. Oh my god! They come off as oddly low budget. The lighting on the characters in this one makes them look like they were painted in Photoshop. Mario's face looks nothing like the other renders, and DK's fur texture is subdued to the point of making him look orange. Am I the only one who thinks these look strange? That said, they still radiate that highly specific, weird energy I love about all of the renders included in this video. I particularly like the atmosphere of the Wario's Battle Canyon and Yoshi's Tropical Island images. This render, meanwhile, is the only one I believe is downright heinous. Everyone except Wario has something wrong with them, which is extra weird because Wario is usually the standout crackhead of the group. Mario has the stupid pog face while he's aiming a finger gun. Luigi's head is massive, and he looks like he's readying up for a kiss. Peach's eyes are simultaneously too far apart and crossed. DK looks like he's a child begging for his parents to let him buy a new game at the store. Yoshi is just a taxidermied corpse whose jaw came unfastened. And Toad looks like meat from Vine Sauce. When I started this video, I briefly wondered if this render was fake. It looks like a companion piece for a creepypasta. But nope. It serves as the default title screen. Nevertheless, I feel like one of these days I'm going to launch my legitimate physical copy of the Mario Party video game on my legitimate physical Nintendo 64 home video game console to see the seven of them frowning at me and bleeding from their eyes or something. Honestly, I have no idea how this one turned out like this. Time constraints? Technological limitations? If you have a guess, let me know. Mario Golf is the next game on the docket. Much like the games that came before it, we have some individual renders and some scenes with detailed backgrounds. We've seen most of these characters' models before, so there isn't a whole lot to cover. They all look fine. The exception is Peach, who at long last looks absolutely stellar. They finally got her face right and managed to incorporate enough detail to make her seem lifelike. I really like this one. The bright lighting reminds me of a sunny summer morning and makes her seem all the more regal. Baby Mario is a newcomer to this discussion. His model is a faithful translation of his appearance from Yoshi's Island, although I'll always think he's a strange addition to the Mario spin-off cast. He's an infant. He has no business participating in half of these dangerous situations. Before we move on to the environmental art, I wanted to mention this baffling render of Mario. He's clearly smiling, but his eyebrows are screwed up as if he's confused or feeling ill. His body language also makes him seem a little depressed, even though he's casually leaning on his club. I don't know, this render just gives me a strange... Hey, I've seen this one before! Nintendo reused it in Luigi's Mansion's instruction manual. This version is obviously going for a much more somber vibe, what with the depressing sepia filter. Now I'm not sure if this render's expression is actually weird, or if I'm just projecting Mario's despair from Luigi's Mansion onto it. 
these shots of the game's various courses effectively portray the dreamlike whimsy I expect from the Mushroom Kingdom. The shots of courses at sunset are quite nice. I'm also a huge fan of this one due to the distant, chilly fog and giant mushrooms. The group shot is beautiful. Sure, Yoshi is just standing around like a lawn flamingo, but it's infinitely better than Mario Party's nonsense. Also, there's this image of Bowser, which I think would make for an excellent reaction image. He's so frustrated, I love it. Mario Party 2 doesn't have too many interesting renders to speak of, so I'm just gonna quickly blitz through what we do have. There are some images of the playable characters in their board-specific costumes, which are pretty cute. DK's wizard hat looks more like a traffic cone, though. I think Yoshi's pirate outfit is my favorite. Luigi's head has, at long last, started to shrink to a reasonable size. Nintendo evidently moved on to fixing him after perfecting Peach's design. A recreation of this render appeared in this How to Draw Nintendo Heroes and Villains book, which I bought at a Scholastic Book Fair when I was in elementary school in, like, 2005. I never played Mario Party 2 before, and I remember being really confused as to why Luigi wasn't wearing his standard overalls. Actually, this book is another one of those interesting artifacts from the late N64 slash early GameCube era. I may want to revisit this thing, too. Man, I'm getting way too many ideas. We finally got some Shy Guy representation, which is always a delight. He looks awfully pink, though. Sure, pink has been a standard color for Shy Guys since they first appeared in Super Mario Bros. 2, but the one who appears in Shy Guy Says is clearly red. What an odd choice. The full version of the box art, much like its counterpart from Mario Party 1, is awesome. Once again, there are tons of fun details. Pirate Bowser is best Bowser, I just wish we had access to a full render of him. Mario Party 2 gave us the smallest and least interesting set of the bunch, but Mario Tennis thankfully brought a few interesting additions. First off, Daisy! Mario Tennis marked her first playable appearance and, appropriately, gave her a slew of awesome renders. I've always preferred this version of Daisy, which only appeared in some late N64 Mario spin-offs and her trophy in Super Smash Bros. Melee. I don't know, I like the longer hair, the white details on her dress, and the arguably darker skin. Nintendo changed her design, and more importantly her facial structure, in the jump to the GameCube, and didn't really have the rendering power to pull her out of the uncanny valley until sometime in the Wii era. I also like this render with the lockers in the background. Very sporty, like it could appear in an early 2000s magazine as an ad for deodorant or socks or something. While Mario Tennis served as Daisy's playable debut, it also served as Waluigi's overall debut. Heh, <laughs> overall. These renders nicely portray his poor sportsmanship and general scumminess. Pamela! Really nailed this beautiful man's design on the first try. Well done. Other new additions received renders as well. Shy Guy has a more accurate color scheme in comparison to his Mario Party 2 render. Honestly, I'm astounded by how little his appearance changed between the release of Mario Tennis and today. Boost the resolution of this scan and you could pitch it as a render for Mario Tennis Aces. Boo and Paratroopa weren't quite as lucky. Their faces are still a little chunky and weird. I sure hope Donkey Kong Jr. appreciated his render, since it was the last one he received before Nintendo promptly threw him into the trash. Birdo's presence here is interesting. I thought she only regained prominence during the GameCube era, well after Super Mario Advance reminded everyone of her existence. But nope, here she is with an N64 render like everyone else. Looking good, Birdo. I wouldn't mind playing as you in Smash someday. Yeah, I said it. Sue me. There isn't much to say about the characters we've seen before. Toad is a minor exception, since the sight of him in a full shirt is a bizarre one. Bring back the vest. I also like how DK's racket was clearly made from a tree branch. That's a fun detail. Mario Tennis continues the streak of beautiful key art. I quite like Waluigi's sinister pose in the overhead shot. This shot is nice, although the grandstand looks like it's filled with confetti rather than an audience. This one, with the colorful cast on full display, is the kind of thing I would have seen in a magazine and immediately wanted to redraw. It wouldn't have gone well, since I can't draw a straight line to save my life, but still, my younger self wasn't so cynical. As an aside, this render has a total Game Boy watermark in the upper left corner. 
I looked it up out of curiosity, and Total Game Boy was apparently a United Kingdom-based magazine that ran from 1991 to 1996. I skimmed through the issue about the Game Boy Color port of Mario Tennis on Archive.org and found... this. The art isn't anything new, but why the hell is the reviewer a proto-troll face? The resemblance is uncanny. I often get nostalgic for the irreverent style of 90s-era ads in the magazines, even though I was barely sapient by the time the 90s ended, but seeing insanity like this in context is always more surreal than I expect. The final mainline title we're gonna discuss today is Mario Party 3. Mario is here, shiny as always. I quite like this render. The way he's pumping his fist exudes anime protagonist energy. It's a side you don't typically see of Mario. This render is hilarious because of the expression on DK's face, but this render of Yoshi with a giant crayon is adorable. To quote one of my fellow Tims, so happy. These renders of Luigi are also pretty cute, and I probably sound like a psychopath for saying that about an image where he's getting stabbed by a spiny shell. I would like to once again express my appreciation for the fact that Peach and Daisy look like their actual selves. We've come a long way from the early N64 era. Daisy especially resembles her melee trophy in this shot. This render depicts a character who became playable in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And Waluigi. This render isn't too special on its own, but it becomes oddly tragic when you have Ultimate as context. This poor man brought his plant to the party and could only watch in horror as everyone clearly enjoyed its company more than his. Speaking of Piranha Plant, here's a render of one with legs. Sniffet also received a render for his appearance in Duel Mode. I just wanted to stop and appreciate it for a moment, since these guys rarely get to appear in regular-ass 3D. Before we move on to our final set of group shots, I want to acknowledge these shots of the castle grounds. They serve as pre-rendered backgrounds for cutscenes, so ignore the awful resolution. The area understandably sports a higher fidelity than it did in Super Mario 64, with enhanced textures on the ground and the castle's walls and roof, as well as redesigns for the bridge and the fence around the moat. Even the trees are fully modeled now. The warm sunlight really sells this scene as an idyllic summer day, and I'd love to just lay in the grass and relax for a while. My only complaint is this weird mountain the artists added to justify the waterfall's existence. It just looks bad. Anyway, my overall point is that I like how Nintendo kept iterating on the castle grounds throughout the N64 era. It created a nice sense of continuity in a franchise known for having none. Let's rewind a bit and circle back to Mario Party 3's group shots. I like how Donkey Kong is mesmerized by the Millennium Star in this one. The sight of Luigi and Waluigi getting ready to strangle each other is fun as well. The overhead shot is colorful as usual. Bowser is once again flexing his awesome model and texture work. Once again, I wish we had a full render of Bowser in this pose. At present, we only have access to this render of him standing around and hoarding coins. A few of the side characters are somewhat off-model here. The Goomba's proportions are fine, certainly better than his render from Mario 64, but his face looks gaunt and his colors are too washed out. This is especially weird since he has a much more accurate in-game render. Something about the Koopa Kid's face also rubs me the wrong way. His snout is a little wrinkled, like he just chewed on a lemon. Koopa Kids are a weird anomaly in general, though. They served as prominent vehicles for mischief up until Bowser Jr. solidified himself as part of the Mario franchise, at which point they promptly joined Donkey Kong Jr. in the dumpster. Mario Wiki has these two pieces of artwork that I believe came from print ads? I'm not sure. The one on the left is fine, although I'm really not feeling the denim texture in the background. The one on the right really leans into the board game vibe, but it just isn't exciting. I wouldn't know what to make of this ad if it was my first exposure to the Mario Party franchise. Finally, here are four renders that illustrate the various types of minigames in Mario Party 3. We have Free For All, 1 vs 3, 2 vs 2, and Duel Games. I'm not a fan of the vapor wavy backgrounds. They're way too busy and don't represent the game very well at all. It's especially weird to see stuff like the boulders and logs in this headache-inducing void. The characters themselves look great, though. Get a load of Waluigi taking a hammer to the temple. Ouch! Finally, I wanted to take a quick look at a few renders from scattered sources. Here we have some promotional artwork for the Mario Artist games, 
which were only released in Japan due to their reliance on the ill-fated 64DD. This one is neat from an artistic standpoint, although I find it funny how his supposedly low-poly hand is still significantly more detailed than it was in any of the games released by this point. The other two renders make me feel a bit queasy, albeit for different reasons. I downright hate this one. It's silly, sure, but it also has a scummy sort of quality to it. Maybe I'm just uncultured. This one, meanwhile, has a bit of every copy is personalized energy. I can't exactly explain why. I initially thought it was because he's looking directly at the camera, but plenty of his renders from Super Mario 64 depicted the same thing. I think his pose is the main culprit here. It's kind of stiff, which makes him look like he's being puppeteered. The image's low quality doesn't help either, since it makes the render seem unfocused, as if I'm looking at it through a dream. Or maybe I'm just overthinking the whole thing. That's entirely possible, and likely. These renders were produced for Mario no Futopi, which, according to Mario Wiki, translates to... Mario's Photopi. Thanks for capturing the nuance of what makes Photopi different from Photo, guys. Anyway, I like how this one is just an old render with new arms painted onto it. They aren't entirely convincing, since they have that same semi-flattened look I disliked about some of the first Mario Party's renders. This render's orange lighting makes Mario and Toad look about as wooden as the background, but once again, I'm a big fan of that aesthetic. Our final render of the day is this shot of some characters flying N64 controller-shaped planes. This render was obviously meant to promote the N64 itself rather than a specific game. I think it's neat. Thanks to the Render Archive on Twitter for digging up this render, as well as some of the rarer Super Mario 64 artwork seen earlier. Well, that went on for an exorbitant amount of time. It was definitely fun to revisit these renders and take a serious look at how Nintendo represented the Mario franchise in the mid to late 90s. I'm not sure if we learned anything exactly, but it was neat to see how much they learned as the era progressed. The art of renders is, of course, alive and well in the 2020s. New games get a slew of artwork more often than not, since publishers need assets to include on box art or posters or whatever. While I can appreciate high-quality artwork, I'm saddened by how Nintendo's renders will never regain that vintage crust. The GameCube closed the gap at the expense of making some characters look uncanny for half of the generation, and renders have only gotten smoother and shinier since then. They aren't bad by any means, just different. This video obviously differs from my others. I've wanted to release a more nostalgic sort of video for quite a while, but all of my other ideas were a bit too ambitious for how little experience I have in terms of editing. Feel free to use the comment section to boost engage, I mean share your thoughts. What was your favorite render? Are there any renders from other games that you think are particularly effective or weird? Which games or franchises do you think I should look into next? Heck, do you even want me to look at more renders? Or is this video a huge mistake? Let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.